Today, we learn about one of the first problems in the early church. Last week, when we read Acts chapter 5, we saw what happens when people want to make a show, performance out of their loyalty to the church's mission, while their hearts are far from that mission. But here in Acts 6, we learn about a problem of favoritism. And that favoritism was happening because there was a discrepancy between two groups, the Hellenistic or, or Greek cultural Jews and the Hebraic Jews. And, and one of the study Bibles that I use for my study um, says this about this passage. It says, the antagonism between these two groups, Hellenistic and Hebraic Jews, is likely rooted in the Hebraic Jews viewing other Jews with suspicion, seeing them as not purely Jewish or as compromisers of their identity. This antagonism, it goes on to say, represents an obstacle to the early church's goal, listen to this, of becoming a new expression of humanity, united in Christ rather than divided over ethnic or social lines. I love that. The early church had a goal of becoming a new expression of humanity united in Christ rather than divided along ethnic or social lines. Now for us, how does that play out? Well, let me offer a couple of ways. Let's, let's think about some, some ways, yes, we do still struggle as the universal church along ethnic or social lines. As perhaps we overlook certain groups that are based on those lines. But I also think more subtly, this is what we might see. Uh, let's think of longtime members of a particular church versus new or infrequent attenders. Who do we judge within our fellowship, whether it's a participation in Sunday services or small groups or youth groups? Who do we think within our fellowship, do we find ourselves asking the question, are they really, are they really one of us? And then going further along the lines of this passage in Acts 6, of whom do we start to ask the question, should they really get that much of the church's resources? When we start thinking along those lines, I think we're getting close to what this passage in Acts 6 dealt with. And that's the problem of Acts 6. But here are two, I think, really cool things about what happened next. So in that time, we need to know that the culture assumed that a widow, and this is what the problem was, was distribution of food to widows, that a, the culture assumed that a widow would be taken care of by their family. But here in Acts, this is what's great about this, the church acts as family. The church steps into the role that was ordinarily assumed by a family. I think that's a wonderful glimpse for us as to what we hope to be as a fellowship. And we need to understand that in this passage too, that, that the apostles request, it wasn't dismissing the role of the distribution of food at all. It's rather a recognition that certain tasks should probably be done by certain people. There is gifting here. The apostles, for instance, our primary role seemed to be teaching, spreading the good news of Jesus, going and planting churches. Those same people could have been horrible at thinking about systems of distribution of food that is fair and efficient. So another great thing that this passage is showing us is that the church is becoming a place that recognizes and uses the gifts uh, of its members. And there's one more thing. There's just one more thing about this passage, and let's be honest. We've all seen organizations, including churches, that choose people who just preserve the status quo or choose people to protect the system. They choose people in order to please certain stakeholders. But the early church here didn't do that. The early church so chose seven people full of wisdom in the Holy Spirit, it says, and they chose Greek Greek men to do this. They chose people who would speak up for those who had been overlooked. I think those things are wonderful lessons for us 
as a church to, to recognize that our roots, our roots as a church are rooted in Acts chapter 6. And so I pray that we would continue to be sharpened by God's spirit in this. And may we begin to reflect the church that we read about in Acts.